Week two of the Transforming Swim Challenge was all about building on that strong body position from the first week. Having got our body now horizontal in the water, we now want to get off our front and onto our sides. The biggest reason is to make breathing easier. Getting your hips and shoulders around and out of the way makes it a lot easier to turn your head. It also means you can lengthen your stroke both forward and back past your thighs. And it also means that you can get the bigger back muscles involved rather than just relying on your shoulders. For all this, we want to focus on using our core and offloading a lot of that force and a lot of that effort from these smaller muscles. Day eight was all about learning to be comfortable balancing on your side. Reaching one hand forward, just below the surface of the water, and keeping the other one by your side, you're gonna open your hips and your body up to face the side of the pool. Keep your spine nice and long and look down into your armpit, and it will just be a, a basically kicking your legs side to side rather than up and down. As you can see from that video, when you need to breathe, you can just turn your chin from looking down at the bottom, straight into your armpit, to turning up towards the sky. Keep that top arm flat, some people like to put their hand on their hip and that makes it a lot harder by lifting parts of your body out of the water, it adds weight, which will force you down. So keep that arm flat by your side. Day nine is a favorite drill of mine, rotator kick. It's simple enough, kicking on your front with your arms by your side so you can use those thumbs to help with that physical feedback, make sure your glutes are working. And then you're gonna turn your hips and your body to face the side. After a few kicks, you're going to return to flat and then return, then turn to kick on the other side. I tend to do this without breathing first up. As you see from that video, keeping your head still and not breathing makes it very easy to think about keeping your body nice and tall and rotating from your core rather than using your shoulders. Otherwise, what happens if you tend to breathe first up is that your head moves first, dragging your shoulders round and the hips sink. This one makes it harder and two, you invariably end up with a mouthful of water. So if you wanna do this drill with breathing, which you might want to do to do a whole length of. Ro kick along on your front, rotate onto your side, still looking down, and then turn your head to take that breath. Now we want to get some arms back into it. Feeling that full body movement. 616 is a drill that gets you feeling the length of the stroke that comes with that full rotation. So you're gonna start by kicking on your side with that arm out in front. You're gonna do six kicks on one side, take one stroke, roll over through your hips and onto the other side. Try and keep your head still whilst you're switching sides. It makes it a lot easier to move from your hips and engage that core and keep your body still and hopefully stay in a nice straight line uh, by keeping your head still. And you've got plenty of time to breathe whilst you're lying on your side. You can always do different varieties of rhythm here, whether you do 12 kicks to one pull or six, you could do three strokes. So you could do 12 kicks on one side, three strokes and then 12 kicks on the other side. In each case, focus on using your hips to move your body and keeping your head still and your body long where you can. Day 11 is where things start getting interesting and you can really start feeling the effects of building up your stroke from those solid foundations. I'm a big fan of swimming with minimal breathing on occasion. It's one less thing to think about and it can help you keep your stroke smoother. Try this, swim as far as you can 
without breathing or almost as far as you can. From a health and safety point of view, don't push it to your limits. There's no need to be pushing yourself to the point where you're blacking out because that's dangerous. Push off nice and streamlined, ears between your arms, keeping that body nice and tall. And then you're going to keep your head still. Doesn't matter what your arms do, you're just going to make big circles. And all you're going to think about is rocking those hips from side to side. As with any drill for any sport, they all exaggerate particular skills or elements. And in the last few days, that's been about rolling further than you might need to. So we just want a gentle motion from the hips to help set the rhythm, rocking from side to side. Day 12 is where people start putting most of their focus without having built up the foundations beforehand. And getting hand entry correct can really set up your pull nicely, can help stop you overreaching and help you control the water. Your furthest point forward when you put your hand in should be a few inches below the surface, just like with the side kick. Make sure your fingertips are below your wrists, wrists below your elbows and elbows below your shoulder. It'll stop you overreaching, it'll stop you collapsing your wrists and stop your hands slipping down into the water. There's not a huge amount of benefit to you working on what your hands are doing going into the water if you haven't done the previous day's work and built up that foundation. You could have the best pull in the world, but if you're dragging yourself through the water, you're always going to have to overcome resistance. So there's going to be a limit to how fast and how easy you can make that swim. So by getting those hips up in the water, it sets you in a better position already to reach forward, which might already correct a lot of things in your pull without you even thinking about it. Day 13 was another core exercise following on from the dead bug from the other day, and it's a pal-off press. It's all about engaging your core to stop your body twisting and separating between your hips and shoulders. The better you can keep your torso as one unit when you swim, the smoother your power will be in the water and the less effort that you'll leak throughout your stroke. It's very much like an old bike where the bottom bracket moves as you push your pedals. We don't want to lose effort through your frame. So when you do that paddle press, thinking about standing up nice and tall, pushing those hands away from you, whether you've got a stretch cord or whether it's part of a cable machine, and not letting that twist you round. And finally, to finish week two, we're looking at an introduction to sculling. Sculling is about learning to control the water. People often talk about feel for the water, and water's wet, that's what it feels like. What people actually mean is feeling resistance to the water, hands and the forearms pressing against it. And if you have this resistance, this control, then you'll go somewhere. If you don't and your hands slip through the water like a knife through butter, then you'll whirl your arms around and not go far. It's much like being in a tiny gear on your bike. Alongside this, we want to feel constant pressure on the water. Otherwise, when we come to swim, you'll likely feel your hands jerk back or you'll grab at the water rather than applying pressure and forcing it. Sculling is not fast. So if you're in a busier pool, maybe do some of these drills for five or 10 meters of a length and then break into full stroke so that you don't feel stressed about other people around you. First up, try this. Stand in the water or even in deep water where you can't touch the bottom. Press your hands out and towards your body, feeling the, water, the resistance of the water, feeling the pressure of the water against your hands and your forearms. If you're doing it in deeper water, you might feel yourself rise and fall with that pressure, with that downward thrust. Play around with how it feels and see what happens if you push harder or more gently. If you fancy, you could take this one step further. Try it on your back with your arms by your sides. If you did swimming lessons as a child or have kids doing lessons now, you may recognize this. Focus on pushing your hands away and then towards your thighs, all the while keeping your palms facing your feet. That's the way you want to push the water. Hopefully doing this, you'll feel that the direction your palms are facing, that's gonna make the difference. So if you're not going anywhere, it's probably because your palms aren't pushing in the direction that you want them to go. 
Remember, we want constant pressure on the water, so it's not a bend and press, it's an outward and inward movement from your hands and from your elbows.